r slash no sleep i work at nasa we made alien contact yesterday i can't tell you who i am and i can't tell you the name of the program but what i can tell you is that if what they say is true we're in trouble now we didn't make contact in the way you would think we would we didn't beam out an episode of the office towards andromeda and hear back from alien critics and we definitely didn't meet them face to face we found another way to communicate something apparently ancient humans had figured out as well there are countless dilapidated ancient structures around the world and some of them not all but some were communication arrays at least a handful on each continent i'm sure you'll be able to think of a few after i describe what we did we've been working on this technology for a while there has been a long-standing theory that sound has a much larger part in the universe than just being random vibrations that the universe is simply a bunch of vibrations and sound and if you find a way to manipulate those vibrations properly, you could do things that seem impossible. We proved that yesterday. By creating an extremely, 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 precise echo chamber, and playing certain frequencies into it, at precisely the right volumes, and the exact right timings, we broke some sort of barrier. Nothing really happened, visually at least. We had run countless tests like these with tiny, minute differences, and this one seemed pretty mundane. There was a slight unnatural thrumming, the glass between us and the echo chamber shook in regular intervals as if we were playing a bass heavy song too loudly. The first thing that tipped us off that something was happening was that once we turned the speakers off, the thrumming didn't stop. My three co-workers and I could all feel this thrumming in out chests still, kind of like being next to a very loud drum. We talked for a moment, before we all fell silent. There was something else now. It wasn't a voice. It was, some sort of intelligent vibration i can't explain it it was like a voice was inside my chest but it wasn't speaking i could just feel what it was saying my cohorts and i debated on the exact wording afterwards but we all agreed on the overall messages each time like i said they weren't really talking so i'll do my best to phrase it in ways that get across what they said in the way they said it wah you guys are back is what i felt in my chest my colleagues and i stared at each other in utter confusion one of the spoke up. Hello? He asked hesitantly. There was a silence for a moment, before the thrumming spoke back. I think I have it set right now, say that again. Hello? I repeated back to it in place of the other scientist. Yep, there it is. He said quickly. You guys figured it out again. That's crazy. It exclaimed. This wasn't what I was thinking the first human slash alien conversation was going to go. I wasn't even sure that this was first contact at this point though. Who is this? What is this? I asked loudly into the open air of our control room. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to give you details like who we are, but, what this is, is the ultimate form of communication in our universe. Your ancestors figured it out briefly too. With some quick deduction on how it was wording things, I think each of us figured out what we were talking to was alien in origin around the same time. Where are you from? I asked. You have to be close. Hell, with the way we were talking back and forth, they had to be really close. It takes communications to Mars a few minutes to get there, just because that's as fast as light is. If we were talking this quickly back and forth they basically had to be on Earth. I guess you wouldn't know. We didn't tell your ancestors. We didn't think they'd get it. Let me do some math real quick. It was about a minute before it spoke again. What you see is your observable universe, that's not the whole universe. Not even close. Multiply that by about 15, and that's about how far we are away. And Terry's a lot past that. We all looked at each other. It was speaking utter bullshit to us now. That was impossible, we'd never be able to communicate, ever. Physically impossible. We explained that to the chest voice, and we were met by an equal level of confusion. Why are you still using light as a yardstick? It asked incredulously. Suddenly, its voice grew slightly dire. You're still not advanced enough. You don't even know. Know what? One of my friends asked. You are dead center in the life abyss. There is no life on any planet around you, for more than 10 of your observable universes around you in any direction. It's a universal mystery how you're even alive. It spoke grimly. Never in my life had I felt smaller, more insignificant and more alone. It continued. And there is a reason for that. I work at NASA. We made alien contact last week. An earnest and tangible feeling of dread took over the control room. There is a reason for that. It reverberated through my entire body as the vibration spoke. But then, silence. 
No one in the control room spoke a word. We barely even looked at each other. The silence continued for over a minute that felt like a day. What's the reason? Dave, the senior scientist on hand finally spoke. He had chosen a serious and somber tone, in an endless list of choices on how to react. If you value your lives. If you value the lives of every living thing on your planet, never use this form of communication ever again. It shook into our chests. That one felt less welcoming. It felt like a dire warning. And just like that, we felt the tingling, shaking force leave our chests. It just simply faded away, like how a when a chord of a guitar is plucked. We looked now to one another. What was the play? Forge on bravely into the void, in the name of science and play the frequencies again? Or take an alien warning and stop? We didn't get to make that decision. Our program is monitored closely by the US military. A voice came I didn't recognize on over the intercom. Don't touch anything folks, we're gonna come in and take a look at a few things. Dave took charge, we were all clearly panicked at what we had experienced, but he seemed to have the most level head. All we can do is tell the truth. He reasoned, just as the door to the control room was opened. The next hour or so was a blur. I was first questioned by my boss as to what he just watched over his monitor. What he saw was a handful of his employees standing in a circle and periodically yelling nonsense at no one in particular. I took Dave's advice to heart, and told him as clearly as I could what happened. I think I was the first he talked to, he wasn't buying anything I said. Slowly I was joined by the rest of the team, one by one, and they recounted pretty much exactly what I had said. So now what they knew, was that we had all started a test, then stood around in a circle, and then all came up with the same story. It started to get more believable. We were each rushed to individual physical exams, and then into a more in-depth interview with someone from the military. The exams seemed to go well, I never heard back from them. The interview seemed to be going good as well, I had basically recounted what I said to my boss word for word, just this time on tape and in front of some guy in an army uniform. Just when things seemed to be wrapping up, the door to our small interviewing office opened behind me. Sir, we need you down the hall immediately. A woman in army fatigue spoke quickly, before rushing back down the hallway. I looked back to the man interviewing me, but he was already halfway out the door before I could say anything. I was sitting there for a few minutes. I had time to think. Was I crazy if I believed whatever the thing in my chest was telling me? Everything it said sounded impossible. But nothing of it felt like a like. Even though I could only feel what it was saying, I could feel its excitement when we first made contact. I could feel the desperation in it as it told us to never contact it again. What was important though, nothing felt like a lie. I noticed that my interviewer had been taking notes as we spoke. Now that I had been left alone for a few minutes, I thought, what was the harm in taking a peek? I slowly reached over the table and flipped his papers over. They read. Unknown frequency report, subject, my name, significant physical changes to the subject since his last physical six months ago according to the base physician after exposure to the frequencies in this report. No cosmetic changes, or complaints of pain or unease describes vibrations in chest. Describes hearing voices after being exposed to the frequencies. No history of mental illness. Frequencies that cause mental illness? Breaks with reality? Hallucinations? That's as far as he got before he was interrupted. I slid the papers back across the table and sat back in my chair. All of us had described the same thing, but they were thinking we were all just crazy. It warned us, and the more I thought about it, I wanted to take that warning to heart. I sat up starkly. She said down the hall. The control room was down the hall. With how they rushed us out of there, we didn't even have a chance to turn the machinery off. We didn't even turn a single dial in our stunned states. All they had to do was press a button, and the vibrations would play again. Shit. I exploded out of my seat, through the door and down the hall. I ripped the door of the control room open, to all of the military officers, and a few more scientists standing there in disbelief. I hadn't even heard the vibrations again. But I could hear the voice on the other side, and now, so could they. I just told you to never use this again. It thundered in my chest. A few of the older men in the room grabbed at their chests in pain. One second, I need to check something. It spoke again angrily. You could have gotten away with just it using it the once. Twice was too much. His sentence ended in a twinge of fear. He heard you. He's listening right now. And he's coming. I work at NASA. We have never made alien contact. This is an apology. Over the last week I have posted two hysterical stories about making alien contact with a far-off, intelligent species. These stories, 
while being a fun writing exercise, have not been appropriate for someone in my position working with the government. They were complete fabrications on my behalf, born from a bored mind after watching an episode of Ancient Aliens. There is no device that can cause read vibrations, and there are no magical frequencies that can cross impossible distances in the blink of an eye. Everything I wrote is pure science fiction. I wouldn't be posting this in truth, if it weren't for the higher ups where I work finding out about my little stories. That was an embarrassing talking to. I truly didn't even mean to write a second part, but the demand was through the roof. I thank you for this, it's really cool to have a bunch of people praising your writing, even though it was just that, writing. I've been told I should try and squash any conspiracy theories that might pop up, so I'm going to be giving you my personal info. My name is Brian King, I'm 34, and I live in Washington DC. I'm a white male, overweight. I have a wife and three children, so my job, and providing for them is far more important than any writing exercise online could ever be. I've actually been suspended from work for the time being. They said if I posted something like this, to clarify that this was all fake, that it would be a good first step to coming back to work. This is my livelihood we're talking about. I can't mess around. I've also been told to write this and mention every aspect was totally fictitious. That includes the echo chamber and any devices I may have described. That includes any intelligent life form from the far off reaches, beyond our capabilities of detecting at this time. That includes any mention of some extraterrestrial threat that our planet may be facing. That includes any physical examinations that myself, or my co-workers may have underwent, and been found to have abnormalities. All of it is false. None of it is true. So yes, unless someone figures it out, this will be the last you will hear from me. I'm truly flattered that everyone liked my writing so much. I think this will end my storytelling career, at least for a good long while. Who knows though? Maybe after my career of rocket science and planetary orbits, I could become a writer? You'll have to keep an eye out for me on the bestsellers list in a few years. Maybe I'll continue my totally fictitious and not true at all about an alien who can talk to us from universes away? Nah, away with that, that's probably too far-fetched for anyone to ever buy in any amount. Anyway, thank you again for reading, and I am deeply sorry NASA, for any shame or doubts I have brought to our organization. I will walk this off and get back to work.